Hello everyone and welcome back to the Social Work Bubble podcast. I'm so glad that you've decided to listen. My name is Laura Swanson. Um, I have both my BSW and MSW and I currently practice as a psychotherapist in New York City at a community outpatient mental health clinic. I love sharing my experiences with fellow social workers and therapists and just being able to, you know, communicate with each other, grow together, and just become the most effective social workers that we possibly can be, continue to grow together. I did just graduate this year, this May, um, with my master's degree. So I am a fresh grad right into the... um, workforce i stayed on at my internship at my field placement that from grad school i stayed on as a therapist and have continued on with my caseload since then and have grown it to about 37 clients uh, some of whom i do see twice a week so some weeks i have about you know 40 sessions so i do keep pretty busy (laughs) uh today i wanted to talk to you about something kind of unique Um, about, oh, I don't even know, a little less than half of my caseload is children and teens. One of my specializations is working with children and adolescents. I also, I mean, even more than half, probably the majority of my caseload is kids and young adults. Um, That's really where I enjoy working. I love working with young people, Perhaps because I am a young person myself, so it is easier for me to connect with them. I do have a a good amount of older adults that I also work with, and I am very connected with them as well, with those particular clients. But one of my passions is working with children and teens and young adults. I think part of it, honestly, is like just my confidence. (laughs) I feel more confident when I'm talking to people that I'm older than, or at least the same age as. Uh, whereas it can be difficult, it can also be difficult for the client to have a therapist who's significantly younger. But that's besides the point. Either way, it's a passion of mine to work with children, teens, and young adults. And one of my primary modalities of treatment has been play therapy. I do also a lot of trauma work, but I think no matter what type of work you're doing with a child or a teenager, you can always, always, always incorporate play therapy. I think it is such an important aspect to the therapeutic relationship, to building rapport, to engaging a child in therapy, and to really just getting them comfortable enough so we can see progress with them in treatment. You know, once if they have fun with you and they enjoy being around you, that's honestly such a solid foundation for a honest, communicative, open, therapeutic relationship. Uh, um, today I wanted to dive into one particular, <laughs> one particular way I've been using play therapy lately for a few of the kids I work with because we are doing telehealth, right? And I think that one of the barriers that I've seen, at least in my own practice, is incorporating play therapy into telehealth practices. Now, when I do teletherapy, it's primarily on video chat. Doing phone calls is a whole nother issue. Perhaps we can dive into on another podcast episode. Um, But we mostly use Zoom, which I love because Zoom also has the whiteboard feature. You can share a screen. And even when you share a screen, like a video or a worksheet, um, the kids on the other side of the screen, they can still color on it. They can annotate. They can still complete the worksheet or color. You can use the whiteboard for many different whiteboard games like Pictionary, like Hey Man, Tic-Tac-Toe, um, you know, drawing their feelings. You can share whatever worksheets you want to. So that's been an incredibly useful tool in teletherapy. But for a lot of the kids where we mostly just play games, especially now months and months into uh, the pandemic, a lot of those games can become boring, right? And I'm still trying to wrap my head around, okay, what are some other things that we can do? How can I be creative? How can I keep them engaged? Whether it's, you know, them playing with their own toys and it's very child-directed play therapy and I'm on the other side of the screen asking them, okay, well, well, show me what you're doing. I see you have, you know, your teddy bear and, you know, your your other 
doll or something you know are they talking to each other what are their names and so it is more like a session that would happen in the office where it's more child directed and I'm simply asking questions around you know what the child is doing and what that scene looks like one particular play therapy tool (laughs) I guess we could call it that really it's a toy and activity is the new game the app that is absolutely wild right now so many people are using it so many kids are on it it's really what many 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 people are talking about is the game among us so if you've never played among us I did not I heard so much about it on social media um, but I'm always, I'm just that kind of person. Even if I hear a lot about it, I just don't, <laughs> I don't care. I'm too busy. I never have enough time. I was the same way when like Game of Thrones was really big and everyone was talking about it. I still have never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones, you know, big franchises, all those different things. I just, I don't have the time, you know? And so when Among Us came out, even though I was hearing a lot about it, I just never really gave it my time or attention until I had clients talk about it. And I think part of therapy is, you know, taking interest in what our clients are interested in. Because, you know, a lot of the times, especially with the kids, like if they're into anime or different things like that, something where I'm not particularly, uh, I don't have a lot of knowledge on it. Having that interest to them really makes them feel good and it gives them that space to really talk about those things to someone. You know, I was I was in a session with a kid who was just telling me about all these superheroes he loves, these different anime characters that he loves, and of course my my knowledge is very little. So I just I used open-ended questions. I showed a huge interest and he was so into that. It was such an effective session and he was so engaged with what we were saying. We were even able to explore when we talk about superheroes, you know, good and bad. What makes someone good? What makes someone bad? Can someone be good but do bad things? Can a bad person do good things? What does that even mean? <laughs> you know? So we were even able to dive into some deeper discussions that kids are perfectly capable of having. I think many times we underestimate children and what they can talk discuss and talk about. But it really opened the door for a lot. And so when I heard a lot of my clients were playing this game Among Us, especially when they would ask me, Miss Laura, can we do you have Among Us? Do you have Among Us on your phone? And I'd be like, I'm sorry, I don't. And they're just like, Ugh. and I'd, I'd tell them, you know, why don't you tell me about Among Us? You know, what's your favorite thing about it? What's this game about? And it, I finally one session, this ch- child who had been p- doing particularly well in our previous sessions and just staying engaged, I thought it'd be good for him to really feel rewarded and, you know, just to have a time when we we did something different as well. We've been kind of just doing the same games, um, doing the same activities and therapy. So I thought that would also be a good change. So I downloaded Among Us. And honestly, one of the great things about this game is you can join a game like through a code. So it's not, it's not like it's completely random. You can join a random game if you want, but if you want to do a game with a particular person, they would join it. They'd send you the code for the like particular game that it's in. And then you can also play with them. There's other people that are also there, but, um, for this particular client, when I was with him, we were on Zoom together, we were on our video call, and then he was also on his phone, I was on my phone, and we were playing Among Us together. So we still had like the face-to-face therapy session call, um, but we were also on the phone playing Among Us, and we were together on the screen. So basically what Among Us is, is there's these many different characters that are called, some are called crewmates, and it's basically like a mystery. Like, you have to find out who the imposter is. The person who is the imposter, they know who they are from the beginning, and they have to go around basically trying to take out all the other players. And if they take out everybody, basically they win the game. But if the crewmates during the game, as they're kind of going around the setting that it's in, I don't know where it's at, a spaceship, I don't even know, um, as they're kind of just walking around doing different things, if they notice anything suspicious or, you know, they see a person 
you know, try to take out another member and that might give them a clue as to who the imposter is. So the essence of the game is if you're the imposter, you want to try to take out everyone that you can to win the game. But if you're the crewmate, you want to be able to try to find who the imposter is um, as soon as you can to win the game. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into it, but that's basically a very <laughs> short gist. Uh, so I was playing this with my client. I was really nervous just because it did involve, you know, death and murder, but that wasn't a concern that I had with this client either. You all want to make sure, you know, we kind of gauge these video games and, and what it entails and what the content of it is into, you know, what's really effective for that child. So I played it. Um, he was so into the fact that I was interested in playing this game with him. You know, he basically like taught me how to do it, which was good for him because as a young kid, you know, getting older, it gave him the opportunity to practice teaching something to someone, you know, using language that was understandable and really being able to just feel empowered, you know, that he was the one in control, that he was the one that was teaching me something instead of the other way around. And I think that was a really fun aspect to it. And it was really just a good bonding moment for us. You know, that he had been playing this game for such a long time. He was now showing it to me. It was obviously something he cared about a lot and plays often in his free time. And so it was kind of like I was looking to him as the expert and I would ask him questions like, oh my goodness, am I doing this right? What do I do now? And I, it always makes a kid feel good when they feel like they're in the control and they feel like, you know, they're the one that's being asked, what do we do? You clearly know what you're doing. You know, you're so good at this. I need help. You know, they, it makes them feel good. It makes them feel empowered and knowledgeable. So not only was that good, um, but this game among us, obviously there's a problem solving aspect to it, but part of the game is right. There's an imposter who's kind of lying throughout the game to, to win, which in itself brought up a really interesting discussion because with this child in particular, we've had an ongoing issue with, you know, dishonesty, some lying behavior. And so this was a really good game to kind of get that conversation started. Obviously it's fun. I don't, I do think there's a time and space for those conversations. And it was also very lighthearted. You know, we want to keep things, especially at first when he just first started showing me this game and was really excited about it. I didn't want to take away from that excitement by then like asking him these questions like, oh, an imposter. Do you know what imposter means? Oh, it means that they're lying and, you know, is lying good or bad? You know, and just get into this whole thing where I feel like it kind of would have dampened just the, the excitement and the happiness he was feeling and just engaging with me in playing Among Us. And so I kind of left it at that for now. Towards the end, we talked a little bit about it, but I think for that particular session, it was really just, you know, encouraging and strengthening our therapeutic relationship. It also offered just a time to like change up what we were doing in therapy. And ultimately games like that, we need to remember they do serve a purpose. You know, it's not just like a free for all, like it's 45 minutes of playing a video game. Um, playing Among Us, you know, it does have problem solving in it. Part of the game is also chatting with the other crew members, you know, if you do see something suspicious. And that brought up um, an interesting conversation that my client actually initiated in talking about cyberbullying, you know, internet safety, a, a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, because, you know, we can't control what other people say in the chat, which is also another thing that we can talk about in session is, you know, if something, if someone says something inappropriate or a little off-putting in the chat, it's a good conversation to remind the child, okay, what's in our control and what's out of our control, right? And how can we, you know, this can make us feel a certain type of way. Maybe it makes us feel annoyed or frustrated or sad or embarrassed or hurt you know how can we then respond to that feeling when we feel that and you know he was the one that really initiated like oh my gosh someone said something mean in the chat and then we talked about you know how that impacted the client and what what his experience with that has been in the past with people saying mean things online or specifically on among us since the chat aspect is a big part of the game and i thought that was 
a very useful um, part of Among Us to really just bridge that gap in the conversation. Basically, I think as a therapist, you can essentially use anything and make it therapeutic in play therapy when you're working with children at least. All those sessions serve a purpose. All of them do. Every game, Among Us, you know, even playing video games, especially now in this world of, you know, telehealth and doing teletherapy, when other therapy games might be getting old, meeting the child where they're at, this is something they're really interested in. So let's be interested too. You know, let's like empower them so they can teach us about it and really connect with them on something that is a big part of their life. A lot of young kids, a lot of young people, you know, they're on their phones all the time. They're playing these games. It's a part of their life anyways. And as therapists and social workers, it's important that we understand the part, those parts of our client's life because we could be missing out on huge parts of, you know, things that are impacting their mental health, especially if, you know, this client in particular saw things in a chat that hurt his feelings. It's important that we understand how that game works, right? Okay, well, what goes into that game? Is there anything we can do to prevent that from happening in the future? If not, what can our sessions focus around, right? And even as his therapist, being able to be with him in that game to see how he behaved during the game, how he moved through it and connected with others, other peers. Um, it really brought up good conversation. And I think that's with anything. If, if we are effective practitioners, we'll be able to find a therapeutic purpose for essentially any game. And sometimes that therapeutic purpose is just to engage the child and to bond with them and to build that therapeutic relationship even more by connecting with them on something that's meaningful and interesting to them. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be something groundbreaking. Things like that are meaningful for children and impactful on them, whether or not it's you know, life-changing, life-altering, therapeutic intervention that we're using. Those things matter to kids. And I think that was an important takeaway for me was just that one decision I had to either say yes to playing Among Us or saying no, saying yes was incredibly fruitful. And I think it ultimately had a significantly positive impact on my relationship with this client. So I'm excited to see what play therapy continues to evolve into as telehealth continues for the time being. Um, I'm really interested in hearing all of your thoughts, you know, whether you share this, comment, wherever you're listening on. Uh, play therapy looks very different now. This is just one example of using Among Us in a client session and how that turned out for me. If you've used Among Us or other video games or other play therapy, telehealth, games, please let us know, you know, share your experience. Um, you can tweet at us, we can, we're on social media, all, you know the drill, right? Um, but that is all for today. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I'm always excited to continue sharing my experiences and knowledge and just continuing to grow together as practitioners and social workers. And I hope to see you again next time. Thank you.